about this. What is it that we're doing tonight? Uh, that is something we're not quite sure about. <laughs> but you're all part of this. It's not a normal performance audience situation. It's a different kind of situation. We'll see how this works. We really don't know. I cannot emphasize how ha happy I am uh, 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 to have Daniel Harding here. A, a, a fantastic conductor and someone that I'm so happy to have here at the museum. Maybe a little bit of context. Uh, um, what is it that we're doing? Well, on one level, I simply don't really know. On the other level, I'm sure that we're interested in certain encounters between art forms. And that is something that we have been trying out in the last couple of years. Why are we doing this, Daniel? Maybe you can say just a few words. <laughs> do, you, do you want, the, uh, do you want the, the polite answer or the real answer? <laughs> <laughs> Both. Okay. <laughs> If you're really interested in something, if you're really interested in something, whatever it is, then kind of by definition, you pretty much have to be interested in absolutely everything. <laughs> because there is no place where th there's no dividing line. And I think the thing for us is we don't want to be um, an orchestra who plays music for people who like music. Do, do you understand what I mean? I mean, <laughs> you know, I have nothing against people who like music. Uh, some of my <laughs> best friends like music, but <laughs> but uh, I'm really interested in people who are interested in other things. And I think that um, I think that there's a there's a wonderful place where music takes its takes its place as one of the hugely interconnected uh, interconnected activities. And we want people to have at least one of two kind of experiences. One is um, to know what it is to be a little bit inside because there's this thing with music that it's always we we play on the stage and you sit over there and you sit down and you be quiet and when it's finished we'll tell you and then you tell us well done um, and we quite like the idea of giving you the chance to 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 um to move around inside the orchestra um, and to feel as, uh, as we uh, as we said yeah. um, <laughs> which is the thing we promised we weren't going to say in this talk um, <laughs> uh, to feel just how how physical music is and how physical an orchestra is and i think what what's extraordinary in that room is is the orchestra takes up an enormous amount of space but but the sound takes up an enormous amount of space and so we're encouraging you to kind of swim in the middle of all of that um uh, you can touch the musicians if you like um <laughs> I, I'll, I can warn you, you come and ask me, I'll tell you which ones bite. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other thing is is that you can walk around all sorts of um, uh, things which the, the ladies are going to tell us about and see things. And, and in the, you know, you might have seen th these wonderful things where you can see the same, the same clip from a, from a film and they'll show it with com two or three completely different soundtracks. Um, and the emotions that you feel when you're watching the same images change massively according to the music. I mean, what we hear has a massive impact on what we see. And so we also, I also think it was fantastic for you to walk around different rooms and look at the paintings or the, or the, the exhibits with this music kind of subtly influencing your thoughts.
going to be inside an installation, inside a big art piece. Matilda worked with that, and maybe you can just tell us a little bit where are we when we listen to the music? Yeah, uh, we're going to be on a floor, which is part of, of um, one of the exhibitions we have now. Uh, the artist is called Crisodolos Panayotto, and I talked to him just the other day, and he said he's a big fan. He was so happy that this will <laughs> take place, mm. place in his exhibition. The work uh, he's done for us um, is based on the collection of uh, uh, Cypriotic artworks that is on the in the Mediterranean Museum here in Stockholm. And the artist, he's born in 1974 on Cyprus, and he's much interested in, in how a national identity is developed and, and how it's manifested uh, visually. So what he has done is he's been looking at the photographic archive, which is at the Mediterranean Museum here in Stockholm, looking at images from uh, the archaeological excavations that was taking place by um, Swedish um, uh, archaeologues uh, in the early 19th century, 1920-1930. At this time, um, archaeology was used as a way of also um, creating national states and national identity. So um, what is done now for us is that he has produced uh, these handmade terracotta floors because much, much of the works uh, that was found during uh, the early 19th century were terracottas. Now it's been tied in one of the, our biggest um, exhibition spaces here. Um, so just, just a quick background. Um, yeah. Of the work. So the orchestra will be actually be yeah. on top of this terracotta floor, and so will you. Another exhibition that is also about relationships, and this time it's not really about, uh, well it is about music, but even more primarily about dance. And you, Vidov, has installed this, and maybe you can just say a few words, because I'm sure you will actually see it if you move around a little bit. The show is very much about early 20th century, when a generation of artists tried to find a way to capture the sensation of modern life, or tried to capture the harmony and dissonances in the modern city. And the way that they did this was in very much part of the sort of musical scene or working with music or working with music as an idea to create abstract works. And they were very interested in the stage or as Daniel mentioned also the, the dance uh, and also the musical scenes of that time. And I think that what they were after is very much what we are talking about here, or what you were talking about, the idea of a Gesamtkunstwerk or of a total artwork, something that can capture everything at once. And so, of course, these very early avant-garde artists worked with avant-garde musicians and made absolutely amazing performances of some we can sort of imagine today and some we can imagine even in the exhibition, but some, I think, has to come alive, like they're probably going to be doing today. Maybe a few words about the piece. This piece is, um, is uh, as can I say, it's, a kind of, it, it's an important piece of, of, of really abstract music, but in a sense, of course, all music is, is abstract. Um, 
it's it's a description. It's not a description. Description is a difficult word, isn't it? It's it's a little bit like the Monet the haystacks. Um, he's he's showing us um, the sea, and uh, but kind of what he imagines or sees of the sea, and it, we're being. It's not a concrete story. There's no. There's nothing where you can say exactly what it is you're hearing, but it's kind of impressions of what it feels like to think about it, to to perhaps to be on it perhaps to remember. I read, and it's quite a beautiful idea, that, that um, whilst composing the piece, uh, Debussy basically never went to the sea, and he said he preferred to read literature about it or look at paintings. <laughs> Since we don't know if it will be like at the con um, at a normal concert, that afterwards there's a perfect moment uh, to uh, uh, to applaud. Yes. I propose a, a, a small applause in a ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>